Hey everyone, welcome back. And today I'm going to the Amigo Guitar Show here in San Rafael, California. This is one of the longest running guitar shows on, on the West Coast. It's been going for over 36 years now. Um, the gentleman, uh, Larry Briggs, started it over uh, 36 years ago. And he goes, he starts here in San Rafael in January. And then uh, the next stop in two weeks is Costa Mesa, California. Then the next stop is Nashville. Then the next stop is Mesquite, Texas. Which, a uh, fun fact for me is I used to live in Mesquite, Texas when I was a little, little lad, about three years old. Um, so, last year's video was very popular, so I decided to come back and do a 2024 video for you guys. And um, I love guitars, I love guitar players, so let's go see what we can discover here at this show. And uh, so, come along. All right. Okay, I got my ticket. By the way, it was 25 bucks to get in here. For those of you who might want to come. Okay, here we are. Banjos. My dad used to have a banjo. Those are beautiful banjos. I don't know much about banjos. Epiphone, washburn. This says gold. This thing's got a cutaway in it. That's what you said. Taylor Lefty. Huh. I bet that sounds good. It's a nice one. It's got some kind of um, some kind of resonator in there. of a work on this filigree work. Washburn, Takamini. Those are some beautiful acoustics. get some of the uh, classic electrics here. What is this here? A 58 reissue. So I don't know, I guess the reissue would be not original, but a copy. Still a beautiful guitar. Telly. Lots hot. It's a jazz master. Look at this guy. Nineteen sixty one airline. Town and country. That's a unique one, huh? Yeah, Gretsch. Seventy nine Gretsch. This one's cool. Reminds you of something Hendrix may have played, right? Huh. Uh, look what it says on the label after what I just said. That one I think I saw last year. How you doing? Good. Having a good show? Yeah. Awesome. Moved some stuff today, moved some stuff yesterday. Great. That's what you're here for, right? Yep. Do you do all four shows? Yeah, we do all the California shows, we do two Texas shows in Nashville. So you do the whole circuit? Yeah. Cool. Like a traveling rock band. Have you been part of this show for a long time? Yeah, we've been coming up here for over 20 years. We came up here the first time, and my partner Tom, it's, his son lived up here, and they just had their grandbaby, and he's a college graduate now. So we've right. been coming, coming up at least that long. Yeah, I know. I mean, I grew up in Marin County. I always remember seeing it. Uh -huh. My first show was last year. Okay. I was like, I gotta come back. 
It's a lot of fun. You like guitars? It's a place to be. Yeah. I was talking to Larry last year. He said it was, it was like the 36th year or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, a lot of history. What year the Texas shows start? 83? 87. 87. In Mesquite or? No, well, the, 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 the first show was in, I'm not sure if that was in Dallas or Arlington. Because I was, um, I'm actually originally lived in Garland, Texas, but I was born in Mesquite, which yeah. is funny. Yeah. So. Well, Garland's right north of Mesquite. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think Jimmy Wallace's shop is in Garland. Well, Mesquite's going to be the new home of the Arlington show. It is? Yeah, they lost Yeah, the Arlington home. venue, they're going to convert it into a museum, an art museum. They're redoing that whole area there around the football and baseball stadium. Yeah. There's a there's an 800 room Lowe's hotel been built in there. And oh wow! There's a between the new baseball field and the football stadium. There's a section called Texas Live. That's a bunch of restaurants and a comedy club. And so they built okay. that hotel right there. They're trying to make it a destination. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what they're doing. And there's you know it's like down. Garland Square, right? Garland right. Square and there's a, there's an area in L. A. called Los Angeles L. A. Live, and that's right. it's probably the same corporate entity that's doing it. Yeah. And, uh, so they're moving it out to Mesquite to the, uh, uh, I think it's Mesquite Convention Center. It's right like a block from the rodeo grounds. Oh, wow. In, in Mesquite. Yeah. I will. So over the years that you guys have been doing this, what, what guitars have gone up the most in value? Or they all across the board? Well, they all have just some, I, I mean, obviously, older Martins and yeah. 50s Les Pauls. Yeah. You know, I mean, when I first started doing this 30 years ago, you could find a, I might not be able to find one, but a 59 Les Paul was about 60 grand. And now they're, you know, 350. Grand. Even back then, 60 grand is a lot of money. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But you could actually still, in those days, you could still ferret out one that hadn't been around for a while. You know, now it's pretty hard to find one that, that's not actually been in the loop before. Are you yeah. waiting for me? Uh, just, oh. yeah, no rush. So a reissue, well, yeah, that's literally like an exact yeah. replica of yeah. the original mm -hmm. that yeah. Gibson made? Yes. Okay, cool. Like it, I know the 59s have the special pickups. Do those yeah, have the same ones? Tight. They try to replicate them as best as possible. Okay. I mean, they use all the same materials. As, you know, they analyze the windings and the wire. and. Try to make them as uh, close to as original as possible. And the average person probably couldn't tell the difference in yeah. sound, right? Yeah, unless you're Eric Johnson <laughs> yeah, or so. Joe Bonamassa. No. Right. You're not going to know. No, this is an original. Yeah. 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 So I'm trying to figure out cool. a way to do that without just. Well, thanks for talking to me. Oh, no problem. Good luck today. I went in and No. Drop an F bomb on it. Oh, that's okay. That's nothing these days, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Yamaha, Ibanez, Gibson, Gibson L30, L37, 1941, now that's a cool guitar there, huh? Look at this Gretsch, man. What a beautiful guitar that is. Anniversary model. Very cool. There's a nice telly, silver one. If you guys ever break a neck, you can get a new get neck here. You even got some drums here. Gibson 61 SG. It's got a whammy bar on it too. 
Yeah, the chapter said that's what uh, it was. It was a Les Paul 1960. It's a 1960. I think the replica. This sounds cool. I bet the reverb on all the feedback on that would be pretty amazing. Plugged in. Gretsch. 79 Les Paul Custom. Those are all custom built? Yeah. This thing's got a lot of use. And then what kind of, so what type of uh, electronics are they? They've got all the electronics. Very cool. Some of these guitars are all like works of art. Like, look at the little rollers here for the strings. Another anniversary one. 68 J45. That's an interesting one, huh? It is. Is that an original from yeah. the 20s? It's 20s, it's original. Wow. Yeah. So, proper, I, 
I guess, you know. Gotta dedicate time, right? Mm -hmm. Check this one out. This one's cool. 68 Telly. Paisley. Oh, wow. That's a really cool looking guitar there. Oh, that's This one's a new one. But it's been a replica. Made to look old. And another jazz master, 62. What's here? 82. Les Paul Wannabe. Literally copies the entire guitar. 67, this is one I haven't heard of. This looks like a rainbow trout. Look at that thing. Looks like some of the ventures would play. 1973. Paul Reed Smith. One over here I didn't look at. Bobby Thomas. Good looking guitar too. Silver tone. 59. So it's just how I love it. It's everything on the top. I'm here to sell parts in the studio. Oh, what? Yeah, it's a little boss. Here we go. There's some littler guitars here and parts. This one's cool. Telecaster. Oh, folks, you can own a, own a nice telly for six fifty. That's not a bad price. Robin Trower Overdrive. Get you that Robin Sound. Texas edition. Yeah, Hendrick. Gibson. Another SG. This one's got a little different cutaway style than a Gibson. Paul Reed Smith. Jeff Beck Stratocaster. Been close to over a little over a year since Jeff's passing. This one's cool, it's like thrown down. It looks that way. Yamaha. You should buy that PP. That's a great face. Of course it is. And the best things in life have been hacked up, including us. Yeah, see, this is where it gets. There's a Collins D1A. 
Martin. C3. I love how some of these are, you know, they don't want to clean them. They're all the rigid all patina. Gibson Custom Western. Here's a Hawaiian steel guitar. Model 625. What is this? Look at that thing. That thing's cool. That's what this show is all about, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. It's a harmony. I know exactly what it is. I have a silver tone version of this. Thing. Okay. Yeah. If a guitar could tell a story, I bet this got many a story. I think this is probably a 58. Okay. That's when they changed and they put Very actually good. put a truss rod in that. Before that, they didn't have. He a can truss adjust rod. the tension. Yeah. And yeah. They didn't even have one when they when they first came out. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's it's gonna need some work, you know. So you don't know the exact year they that back then. Well, I would have to look at you know inside and look at the pots and get the numbers off of them oh okay but i know the years they made these and i know that in 58 they put a truss rod in okay so i'm betting this is a 58. wow well, what kind of work are you going to do to it well um i have the, the silver tone i have i replaced the pots and i had these rewound but okay. um I'm not going to do that. I don't think I'll have to do that to this one. Does that mess with the original sound of it or not? No. Can you rewind them? No, no, no. These are P these are these are Gibson pickups. They okay. were silver tone and harmony. Okay. These are P13s. They're the predecessor of P90 P P90s. And the P90s were in the Les Pauls a lot or no? Uh, P90s are usually they're either white or these, okay. these are P90s. Oh, okay. And they look a lot like a, a, a humbucker, but the pole pieces are in the middle, and they're a single coil pickup. A lot of a lot of guys are nuts over P90s. They love them, so and I'm one of those guys. So. They have a real warm sound to them, right? Yeah, they well, they're single coils, so they're like a Fender pickup, but they got a little more girth to them. You right, know, a little more girth. You know how Fender Fender Me. single coil. <laughs> They, they cut through the frequency of, that cuts through the mix really well. Okay. That's why a lot of guys like Fenders. Yeah, that's a beautiful little guitar there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty happy when we got that. You got it. At this show. I right just paid 2500 for it, so nice. I'm hoping I can sell that Martin to justify it. <laughs> What's your Martin? Is your Martin here? This one here? Do you tour with the show also go to all four of them? What's that? Do you go to all four shows? 
I've, I've only gone to this show, and this is the first time I've come to this show for, oh, okay. for quite a few years. Oh, okay. It's my partner, Marty. Most of this stuff is his. Okay, right here? Yeah, that's that's his card there. And uh, he just needed more guitars, so I came and brought some of mine. This one's mine, too. Look at this thing. Wow, that's beautiful. It's a moonstone. Look at that. Man, gorgeous. That's a madrone. The wood. Grows in Northern California. I actually supplied him this wood and, he, really? and he built this for me. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Very nice. Well, thanks for showing me your guitar. That's, Heck yeah. that's awesome. I bet you're excited about that. I am. It's going to take some work, but I'm, I'm really, really excited about it. It's kind of scary, you know. I hope I did all right on it. Well, you, I mean, you, you and I know they're only going to go up in value. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even if you wait five more years and you'll get your money back plus more. Yep. <laughs> Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so true. The vintage thing is amazing the way it does that. Like cars, I guess. Yeah. I saw the pair of Very cool. Well, I'm going to go check some more stuff out. I'm Paul. Paul nice Robbie. To meet you. Yeah, nice, nice to meet you, you Robbie. Yeah. Thanks. Enjoy that guitar. Yeah. I'm going to leave it open like that. Yeah, let nice. people admire it. This guy here sells guitar straps. Some nice ones too. Look at the work so on that. Let's give the gal a, a strap. Western um, ones. Beautiful straps. Um, what would you think? What kind of guitar does she play? Um, she's playing, learning to play the ukulele. She doesn't need a guitar for that. But I got her. Uh, K R Q R. Pardon? Oh, you remember of back course. in the day? Of course. It was KSJ, KOME, or KRQR. Yeah. yeah. Right? KSJ is still around, aren't they? Uh, I don't know. Oh, man. Now it's Alice. Oh, yeah. Alice. Oh, yeah, I know. That's sad. Which one is that? Uh, that one's a Fender. Yeah. 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 That was a radio station, local in the Bay Area, rock station. Okay. Check out some of these other ones here. Reckenbacher. I like the detail of that, 12 string too. But that sounds awesome. Paul Reed Smith. Seventy five Gibson L five. I've never heard of that. Just look at the color of this guy. Two thousand ten Gibson Les Paul Custom nineteen sixty fiftieth anniversary two hundred made. Beautiful. Some beautiful guitars here. Are these all yours? My dad's. Gorgeous. That one's really nice, huh? Yeah. Every guitar is like a work of art, you know? Yeah. They're all some so different. Them, some of them definitely can be. It's yeah. Cool. Huh. Never heard of that one. Featured in a magazine, it's like. Ernie Ball Music Man. It's under Strat. Look at these uh, old amplifiers, Music Master. Eighty-three Super Champ.
Echoplex. What is this thing do? I don't know what that does. I guess it cuts out the uh, electrical buzz. Point reverb is famous. What we got here? This thing. This is a good looking guitar. Epiphone. 2011 limited edition. In mint condition. It looks like it's in mint condition. Joe Pass. There's a jazz version there. Larry Coriel, a Lee Rittenauer would like to jam on one of those. Greg Bennett Royale. says Led Zeppelin one too. Is that right? Is that your favorite Zeppelin record? Well, when I was, the story behind my love for Zeppelin is when I was six. Yes. My, my parents were hippies. Yeah. And they took me to a party. Yeah. And there was like a guy listening to Led Zeppelin two on headphones. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, what's that? And he just yeah. put it on my head. Oh, nice. And, you're like, and I was oh. like instantly hurt. Yeah. And I was, yeah. yeah. I remember. I was six. I remember in 78. <laughs> Flying, or, no, it was about 79 actually. Uh, flying into Phoenix Airport. Yeah. And seeing the Zeppelin airship. Oh, really? On the tarmac. Wow. Yeah, and walking out of the um, airport and seeing Paige and seeing Paige and Plant at the bar. And my Holy mom crap. was a hippie. Same. Were you aware of them? Again? Yeah. Well, okay. I, I, no, I was not aware of Led Zeppelin. I, okay. I saw the airplane and I kind of knew. Oh yeah, that's that rock band. Right. 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 Uh, and then my mom and my step and my mom and my mom's boyfriend were walking out. They go, Yeah, that's that's Jimmy Page and Robert Plant. Uh, we, we just saw them at the bar. I'm like, oh wow. And then we left. They had gone to the show the night before. Wow. Yeah. So they were really excited about it. You know, and I was kind of like, oh, cool play. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's 79. Yeah. Right before Bonham yes. passed. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I, uh, my uh, favorite Ze Zeppelin record is House of the Holy. It's oh, yeah. my favorite. I love that record. No Quarter is oh, incredible. Incredible. The guitar in there is so fucking cool. Yeah. I saw a Mr. Jimmy in Mill Valley. You know that guy? He's the Japanese guy. No. Oh, is he like a page devotee or something? Oh, he. He's nuts. Yeah. He's a Japanese guy who's devoted 30 years of his life to doing to everything. Being Jimmy Page. Oh, nice. And he's so fanatical that he he ha he get, buys all the bootlegs he can find. Right. He tries to mimic to get the, the every bootleg. single thing. Wow. He plays in Jason Bonham's band. Oh, okay. But he also tours independently. So, and it's called Mr. Jimmy. Yeah. If you ever have a chance to see him, it's crazy because he's he even has the the Madison Square Garden outfit. Oh wow, yeah. And he has he has that analyzed and every sequin is in perfect and he probably moves just like Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so cool. They call him Mr. Jimmy. He's a Japanese. They just made a movie about him actually. Oh, that's cool. So I love that. I hadn't heard of the guy until I went to see him and right. it's pretty amazing. Nice. Where did you see him? In Mill Valley at the Sweetwater. Oh, right, yeah. Makes sense. So yeah. You having a good show? You selling yeah, a lot of yeah, stuff? Yeah, we are. We, we sold quite a bit. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. You guys are out of Alameda. All yeah, right. but you're in the world headquarters right now. Oh, I'm right here. <laughs> you work out of a small shop? No, no, this is our personal collection. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So Mike and I got to move together. Is this your contact? Uh, that's Mike's contact, yeah. I'll just, I'm putting this on my YouTube channel. Yeah, right on. The last video got 32,000 views. Really? Here, here, then. <laughs> so, 
it, it did pretty well. <laughs> Do you drink beer? I don't. Okay. Well. I have nothing against it. I'm not anti-alcohol. I just don't. <laughs> Do you listen to vinyl? Yeah, of course. Okay, I got a friend here. What's up? Put that on your YouTube time. Oh, yeah. right on. Yeah, that's my band, and uh, we do like kind of a Sabbathy type of a thing. No way. That's my that's thing. Awesome. I'm into Black Sabbath. Oh, I'm totally I'm, into Sabbath. Yeah, Sabbath. I mean, Are you kidding? this is like you know, this is a TI or this is a TI 100 Laney Tony Iommi model. Uh, we got a black Tony Iommi SG over there. Yeah. That's so funny you said that. I was literally. I'm I'm forcing myself to learn guitar because yeah. I always wanted to do it. And yeah. Now, but now I don't have a lot of time, so right. I dedicate a half hour a day. Cool. And I was learning at NIB last night. Nice. <laughs> so it's cool, down, 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 Yeah, down. of course. <laughs> yeah. Good to know. But yeah, that's a yeah. Laney, a Laney, a T I G H L T I. This is what he would use. Yeah, it's a, it's a commemorative. Wow. Did you see them on their last tour? Oh yeah. Yeah. I've seen them. Yes. Yeah. We went to the San Jose show, me and my son, and then... I, I was there with my son. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, the first band I ever took it to was Sabbath and uh, Shoreline. He was 10. Yeah, that was at uh, the 13 tour, or was that before that? I think it was 13. Yeah. Before, yeah, they played think, Shoreline. He was, that was 11 years ago. Was yeah, 20 that now. was 13. Yeah. So... He had no idea how lucky he was at the time. Right, but now he's like, thanks, like, Dad. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, of course he's a rocker, too. Yeah, right on. <laughs> well, thank you for the record. I'll, of course, I'll get, that on your, get that on your YouTube. I, I definitely will. Yeah. Are you doing some YouTubing? Yeah, I have a channel. I film all over the Bay Area. Awesome. <laughs> That's a Black Wolf beer, and if you go to the URL there, it'll take you to our band video. No way. Yeah. Do you guys uh, jam in town? or? Yeah, we're from the East Bay. Sweet. Yeah. Is this your first record in my hand? No, that's our first record, yeah. Certainly not our best, but first. And it, how about the beer? The is beer is with original powder out of... Uh, but you, you created your own line no, of beer? Or no, 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 that's a brewery. They, they, they're they in, in conjunction with us. That's awesome. Cooperation, yeah. So you'll be able to buy that at uh, Whole Foods. Wow. Yeah. But take that, give it to your son. I will. I'll enjoy it. Art by, art by Alan Forbes from San Francisco. Very kind of famous. Uh, that's our logo. Who also did the cover of the record. This is the QR. You see, that, does it pick it up? Uh, it will when people oh, yeah. uh, watch the video. But... Seventy-three, sixty-five. 
big Fender Mustang. That's a good year, the year I was born. Got a little whammy bar on it. Someone likes Fender Mustangs. Another one.
a cool one too. All these old electric Ventures, there's the Ventures. For those of you who don't know who the Ventures are, they're an instrumental group. And they were uh, very good. But no singing. All instrumental rock and, rock and roll uh, from the 60s. Handmade Gibson bass. Huh. It's a six string bass. Sixty-eight Gibson. One day I'm gonna have to make some sell it Telecaster Custom. I like that. Love the paint job on this guy. Reissue. It's a 68 Tele. It's a Sonic Blue. That doesn't look blue to me. Ninja 
special there. Some rare ones here. Fender Strat, Master Built, 1960, 7200. Some for 11,000. Fender Custom Shop. What year is that? 53. Wow. Yeah, it belongs to this guy. Freaking incredible. It's, it's so the minute you start playing it, you can tell it's amazing, right? What's that? The minute you start playing it, you can tell it's amazing? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can. Yeah. You can. And these, these things, until you, you know, turn up and break them up, you know, P90s don't really kick into you. You put a lot of crank volume for Yeah, that. I mean, it's made for that. Yeah. You know, and, and, but it, you know, this, little, this, this thing's not going to do it justice. Yeah. It'll do the job, but, you know, so the, it plays beautiful, and that's certainly the first part. Yeah. That's a 53, huh? Yeah. Real early, huh? Yeah, second year. Wow. It's had a headstock repair, it was, you know, it was repaired, but it yeah. doesn't mean anything. It was done by yeah. this guy in Canada, some real pro. It was all put together correctly and, re, you know, the finish is original. I think so, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it certainly looks like it. Yeah, it does. There's a little crack in here and all yeah, that. Yeah, no, it, and this back here, I mean, that's not a relic job. No. No. They don't. They can't do them quite that nice with a relic. They can get close, but you can tell. I mean, Even the just, Gibson guys. Just can't. the color is just. Yeah, so that's a great color. Great. I know. It's awesome. Yeah, that thing is. Yeah, that's really. So the P90s are really what gives it that sweet sound, though, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I had a 50. I had a 52. You had a 52? Yeah, it needed a lot of work, so I sold it, which okay. I wish I hadn't have done. I wish I'd have had somebody redo it. Yeah. It needed a neck reset. The yeah. action was real high when I got it. Uh -huh. I only paid five grand for it. Uh -huh. So I was, you know... Yeah, I should have kept it, but they had routed out some stuff in here and tried, and put a, tried to make it a 56. Oh, really? Because the older ones, you know, the, ne the neck resets. The original ones, the necks weren't set right. Okay. Huh. So then when they so the actual the original yeah, the they screwed up. There's the a mistake with the neck. Yeah, the 52s. This is the first year they came out. You know, they were figuring it out. Yeah. So, so to you know, by the time they got to 56, why is everybody uh, lust after the 59s? Well, because well, a couple reasons. There was only 800 of them made because oh, okay. everything was a gold top until 59. Okay. And then they tried the burst. Okay. They go, this is a piece, this isn't going to sell. And then they went off and they were gone. So there was only 850 of them. Oh, okay. So it's okay, so supply and demand, right? It's not just that. It was the machine that wound the pickups, which now has been rediscovered by a guy. And that guitar has those pickups in it. They're rewound on this one? the original machine. So the machine affected the sound? Of the Apparently. Wow. Because they were all wound on that, you know. I mean, it's just the holy grail. Peter Green, you know. And yeah. Guys like that. Jimmy Page. Yeah. You know, yeah, Kurt, didn't Kurt Hammett buy Peter Green's guitar? For Metallica? Yeah. He yeah. calls it Greeny, the guitar Greeny. Oh, I, I don't know, but I wouldn't doubt it. I sold a guitar to uh, James Hetfield, an explorer. Yeah, Kurt, I went to, I saw Metallica like three years ago, and he was playing that guitar, and then I, I said, I wonder what that is. But then I went and watched the video, and it, it, it is, they call it the Greeny. Oh, Peter's guitar. Yeah, and it was played in Fleetwood Mac, and, and then all sorts of history. Yeah. So the 59s, you know, it's really, I don't know, they're just, 
are just great, man. They're the holy grail. I saw one on the internet for sale the other day, 371,000. Wow. <laughs> if you own a guitar that valuable, you'd be so paranoid. It's kind of like these. They don't sell because they're, you know, they're a little high. I mean, I negotiate stuff, but yeah. I'm not going to sit them. But if you're like touring, wouldn't you be paranoid of having that thing ripped, stolen, or misplaced? Or... Well, it happens. Yeah. You know, but if, it, if it's got exactly what you want, how are you going to do without it? That's what happened to uh, Peter Frampton's guitar, right? Yeah, exactly. And then he found it, or someone yeah, found it. Came in back an 35 attic. years Isn't later. That crazy. It was gone in a plane crash. And they found it. I think they found it in parts with somebody. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah, Thanks for I don't know, this Fred. I, you probably want to sell this, you know, to me. Probably. <laughs> I'm not sure. That's a beautiful Does guitar. Sell it to you? Yeah, well, I'd have to sell my great guitar. Great story. Getting a lot of people talking to me today, which is great. We're all willing to talk and open up. He was saying this one is rewound with the original guitar pickup winding machine. The pickups in this. That someone found. He said it was the Holy Grail, the original pickup machine. Very cool. Well, this is a bass guitar. Some sort of McCartney and I played back in the day. But he would have played Rickenbacker. That's a nice one. Tell you. Just the smell of the guitar case when the guy opened it up, it smelled like history. The smell of history. Look at these here, these are looking pretty awesome too. Look at that guy. Tubes, anybody? Need some tubes? Some warmth? Bucket of warmth, right? Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful guitars here. Big boy Gretsch. Harmony 55 Gibson SG295. That's a good looking guitar there. Firebird. Rare Cherry. Another Firebird. This one's been altered. This guy's got the rare ones here. Check out that, that's a cool finish. Very cool. How many 
many you want? All of them? <laughs> that's a nice rick of space down there. Yeah. Fifty-three telly. I had a sixty-three at one point. Boy, do I regret selling that. I owed my buddy three hundred dollars, and I gave him my sixty-three telly to cover my dues. Back in the eighties. That was cool, SP West Ball Studio. Fender Bronco. Never heard of that one. I guess the Strats are so popular, you never hear of all these other ones. I've heard of the Jazzmaster, heard of the Mustang, but the Bronco? Nah. There's a 57. I think the price tag says $75,000. If I'm not mistaken. I don't, it doesn't look like a 57 to me, though. And I'm no expert. $12,000. Love this color. This one's cool the way it's scalloped here to fit comfortably against your body. Reckenbacher's base. And it's a 66. Yeah. Come on down. Come on down. What should we have? Epiphone Triumph, 1943. Gibson Styleway, 1908. Is it Martin? I don't know a lot about acoustics, but I do know the name Martin. Let's see what else I'm walking by. We got banjos over here. Anyway, I just came I was That's cool. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. That's a 59? No, 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 you're fine. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to let you know who that was. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to let you know who that was. I didn't want to let you know who that was. Five bandmaster changed out the speakers. Eleven thousand dollars for that amp. And this guy over here. 
here has got amps and pedals galore. You want to show me that guitar? You bet. This is, uh, this is a Tau guitar. T-A-U. Yeah. And uh, we've got three different scale lengths. This is a uh, Gibson scale length, 24 and three quarters. Okay. We've got a Strat scale length and a baritone that's not here. Baritone's 28 and 5 eighths. Uh, it's a Stratocaster pocket neck. So any of the aftermarket necks can go. So a small mom and pop company can make huge selection. We get five different back shapes. Yeah. Three different scale lengths. Yeah. All different woods. So it's a, what is the main purpose of it? I see it. I noticed it's really small. The main purpose is being a travel studio or? guitar that thinks it's a travel guitar. It's a okay. studio guitar that you want to grab when you got an idea and you don't want a boat anchor on the wall. Right. And it's flexible. It. The pickups come out of it in oh, ten, wow. <laughs> 10 seconds. That's cool. What a great idea. So you can, so you can change out the sounds. So huh? we're going from Filtrons to doing some, uh, these are uh, Lindy Fralin uh, single coil vintage pickups. So instant Boom. sound change. Right, so that's 10 seconds, that's 15 pretty seconds cool. here. And, uh, and you can have a whole array of them, I see, right? Oh yeah, all, all sorts of different ones. This is a Z coil from uh, GNL. Yeah. That's a lace death bucker. A lace death bucker? Death bucker. They're a Lumitone series, but they, uh, it's a very hot uh, Lumitone from lace. Uh, we've got. I've never seen. That's definitely really cool. Yeah, it's just an odd instrument. What made you uh, think about designing that? Uh, if you're going to do it, why be bound by everybody else's version of it? We wanted a small. If you don't need a headstock, if it sounds better to get a headstock off, the head's right. got to go. Right. So, you know, some people think it's a little uglier. I don't care if well, it's... Well, you remember in the 80s, these are yeah, really popular. Steinberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So this is kind of a Steinberg upgrade, I guess you could say. Yeah. Everything that we didn't uh, needed to come along in the years. When that, it's an aluminum body. Um, and the body blends into the bridge. So oh, yeah, the, the only that. thing between the uh, saddle, I mean, excuse me, the only thing between the string and the body is that one saddle piece that's okay. a graph tech part. Wow. So you don't have to. And you can tune it really easily right break here. With ordinary strings. Yeah. You don't need the ball ball strings. Yeah, they got it. So you have a A, a note doesn't have to go by all the other strings before it gets to the body. You don't have to excite everybody. So you get individual kind of action. And you don't have to work on your muting the other strings quite so hard. Yeah, that's really cool. Thank you. Yeah. What? So what are the prices of? It's uh, sixteen hundred bucks for okay. with one module pair. Let's say a Seymour Duncan. Okay. Uh, like a Jazz JB. Right. Kind of thing. And it that goes up from there. To very reasonable. On, depending on how radical. So if you got what? What are these individually priced? Uh, they're a hundred and twenty plus the street price of the pickups. So that ends up at two hundred and twenty up to five hundred. That seems cheap. That is. And we're trying to, to get me. some notice. <laughs> Wow. So if someone was interested, how would we get a hold? Is this a QR code? You bet. Very cool. And all the contact and social media. How long has this been out? Yeah, we've been working on this eight years, but maybe full time only uh, five years. I don't know. Four. That's pretty cool. I've never seen anything like that. Very well. Any questions? Uh, have you had um, good traction with it so far, or not, just getting not, started? Not, or? It's the uh, uh, American aesthetics. You know, it doesn't the look. It doesn't. But you said it's mostly for the studio. It's right. So that's what uh, we, you we got need, any time? Like we need uh, to contact those kind of folks, and we don't hmm. really. We do NAM shows, but that's about it. We need uh, some visibility in the internet, really. What about like uh, having uh, someone use it to try it out in the studio it might be a good idea. You can, you can do it anytime. Right? Yeah. You know, that's pretty cool. So you going to the NAMM show? That's yeah, coming we'll next. That's two, like in two, two weeks, weeks, right? right? Okay. Did you? So they'll be at booth 4831 at the NAMM show. 
if you want to come check it out. What's your name? The uh, switching is kind of interesting. And when you have two pickups in, this middle switch is now a tone control that can go dark one or dark two uh, on both on globally. If you have a, a single, single, single uh, like this, yeah, that switch automatically becomes a middle switch, middle pickup uh, control. Okay. And the middle mid tones are, are uh, tweaks we call them, so that if uh, Hit the front front pickup is in a mid position. That that's a 90 degrees out of phase with the back one. So uh, and if it was a humbucker, that's way more variations than a five. Oh yeah, five switch. And if it's a humbucker, then it would be a single coil mode switch. Right. Automatically, wow. as you switch, it assumes new new roles as you're switching in and out. That's really cool. Well, thank you for showing me. Nice to meet you. Well, that was cool. That guy was showing us that guitar that's a new invention that he came out with. He's switching out the pickup packs. And they're trying to wrangle a, a, a guy that can play with Look at this thing. Washburn. Fender Villager, look at the neck, 12 square. Good looking guitar, but it sounds amazing. Here's a Martin, 1945. This is, this is the metal section. Randy Rhodes amp. My hero. Randy Rhodes. Man, do I miss that guy. Randy Rhodes tribute guitar here, looks like. One of the best licks that I personally think Randy Rhodes ever did was the very end of the song Tonight on Diary of a Madman. The last 30 seconds as that song fades away. I used to crank that uh, back when I made cassettes. I'd turn the levels up as high as I could go so it would be louder. That was some amazing guitar work that a lot of people, um, only nerds like me, that would know about. Okay, let's see what else these guys got. Here's another one of those really cool paint jobs. 15 grand for that guy. Tancaster Custom. Wow, look at the use this one's got out of it. <laughs> I have a 78 uh, Blacklist Hall Pro. That's okay. Guile. G U Y L E. Sorry. Playboy Edition Fender. Beautiful one there. Uh, you might want to have a dude. stripe in this guy is really nice. This is Billy Gibson. Billy Gibbons. ZZ Top Edition. That guitar over there is really sweet too. <laughs> Martin, hey, a five hundred dollar Martin. Hard to find. Do a paint job on this guy. Seventy sparkle. 
Daisley Brown. That one's cool, that thunder. More of a metal flake. Interesting, these people over here are selling jewelry at a guitar show. I'm not sure why, but okay, more power to them. I hope they're selling stuff. Early uh, Clapton Artist Series. Rickenbacker's cool, and that's a 12-stone. Kind of looks like a Charvel or a Jackson. Uh, there's a, a fellow that was walking around here oh. yesterday, and he's a session guitar player, and on Christmas Day, he went to go do a session at a studio that he had his guitars at already, and the guitars were stolen. So, I said I'd put it out there. Let me uh, put that on my video. Anybody see these guitars floating around? Is that a GoPro? Yeah. Call this guy. Fine Mexican guitars. Look at the wood finish on this. Dude, look wood, wood on this. Amazing. Any um, logos on them, which is interesting. The woods are nice. Steve Klein. One of my prices Sonoma. Also, I acquired a great value. Look at the shape of that. But I just talked to the guy, look at his name. Look at this guy here. National. Duncan. Yamaha. 1966. Fender Coronado. Probably to compete with Rick and Docker. Guitar College. Jazz Guitar Fest, Cambria. March 1st and 3rd. Man, there's some nice guitars here. A bullet hole. You see that bullet hole? Nice. That's the story of that. Martin shot three times with Case. It's the famous bullet hole guitar. Famous bullet hole guitar. <laughs> I don't know what's. Yeah. Must have been deep in saw, Chicago. Saw somewhere. the world over. Yes. It's usually easier than poison. Bonnie and Clyde guitar. <laughs> that guitar has seen better days, I think. the story is behind it being shot. No kidding, huh? <laughs> they <held> it up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure if a lot of these guitars could talk. I know, I've been them. saying that all day. When yeah. I, you see the ones from the 50s and stuff? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. If these guitars could talk. Well, they can talk, but not verbally. 
about that one. Another national. Look at the look of that one. 1961 rare. Only two in existence. Let's get a closer look at that. Very cool. Here, Palm. Pretty lady on that one. Look at this one where the tuning heads are bizarre. Here's more acoustics. Here. Pearl guitars, 1967 Gibson. Check this one out. I like I like it. We got a got more Gibsons. West Hall, 82. Ah, look at these. No. Maybach, 
Maybell. Maybell. Probably from the 40s, that one. K. K. Harmony. Fender, which has seen a lot of use. Got some unusual guitars here. Gibson. Do not text. 52 Sunburst. Got a price tag of $50,000 on it. a beautiful guitar there. I can see why it says do not text. I just have a few here helping out my friend. Cool. Most of these are well. you play? What's that? Do you play? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. What's your favorite guitar to play? Well, you know that's not a fair question. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they asked that one time to Billy Gibbons, and they said, do you like a Strat or a Les Paul better? And he said, that's Let's... the most unfair question I've ever had. Well, yeah, of course. So I like Strats and Les Pauls. Man. Yeah. A really nice old... Uh, Vintage Stratocaster or uh, you know, nice old gold top Les Paul. Those are my two favorites. Sorry. Yeah. How about you? I'm learning. I'm oh, a beginner. Too. I bought well, a your beginner guitar right now. Yeah. There. Two grand. I wanted to learn my whole life and never did it. Now that I'm older, I said, you know, I need to see you, just man. do it. Never too late. So I'm spending a half hour a day learning. Right on. Eventually, I'll learn to play. <laughs> It all takes, yeah. You, you quickly realize why people learn when they're kids because they have all that time. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's a cool guitar here. Hey, someone's uh, playing a harmonica. Okay, I'm going to go see if I can find Larry Briggs. He's the guy we're putting on this show. Oh, okay. The color of that. Great color. Okay, I do see Larry over there now. Let's see if he's free. He's a popular guy. took your advice and came today a little not yeah. so crazy. Yeah. So I'm glad it's going well. Yeah. The rain probably helped you yesterday. Yeah, we did. We had, like, I think we probably had a record crowd for a Saturday up here. Awesome. Selling a lot? Not that much. Uh, I must I'm be buying a lot. Busy right? running around. You know, <laughs> it's hard for us to concentrate on sales when we got all this other stuff going, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Did you have any um, any people come and play special yesterday or anything? No. If they did, we shut them down pretty quick. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys have Thursday and Friday is like private invite only. Right. We're not here on Thursday. Do you ever? Is that when the celebrity guys show up? We used to guys like uh, Santana and Satriani and uh, oh. 
Green Day. And yeah. Been, but years ago, you know, they, they don't come in. They only show on Friday, but they, would, they don't do that anymore. Not so much. Too busy touring, I guess. Cool. I don't need to plug them in. All right. That means you're not going to buy it yet. <laughs> Excuse me. Look at this thing. All right, that was Larry, and he runs this show. He tends to have some really sweet guitars here. SG Special Cherry. That's an uh, Angus Young one without the whammy bar. What do we got here? More. There's a roll top. 49.5. One of the best. Do not touch. Do not touch it. Camera's looking at it, but I'm not touching it. Not for this place. 58 Fender Strat. Senders. 
six Gibson Super 400. Ten grand on that guy. Sixty-one Gibson ES three thirty-five Cherry. This one 45 or this one 500. You never know. <laughs> well, everybody, I got a record in my hands, I got a beer in my hands, I got a CD in my hands, they're all given to me. And um, I'm going to head out. I just want to thank everybody for coming along with me on this video today, checking out the guitar show here in San Rafael, and I will see you on my next video. All right.